Welcome to Reluctantly Supernatural in an Age of Reason, the podcast where we explore the place of the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the church. Our hosts, Pastors Mark Cowpersmith and Bob Maddox, combine their years of ministry experience to address the issues of the prophetic gifts in our modern world. Join us as they interview their guests from a wide variety of spiritual leadership backgrounds, as they share their insights on the place of the supernatural in the church and the world. And now, our hosts, Mark Cowpersmith and Bob Maddox. So this is another episode of Reluctantly Supernatural, and we are thrilled to have my good friend, Marty Souza, on the show. She's a pastor at a church, a growing, very dynamic church in Fremont, California, in the Bay Area. Marty, how many years have Shelly and I been coming up to visit you guys? Seven years. Since Seven years? Seven years. Gosh. Did I have hair? Did I have hair when we first started coming to your church? <laughs> no, never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh a lot. We we laugh a lot, don't we, Marty? We do. We have a blast. Yeah. So um, the reason for this interview is, I don't know if you remember, Marty, but it was a number of years ago that you and Jim and Shelly and I went out to dinner. Somehow we got on the subject of angels. And you started talking about some experiences you had had with angels. And to be honest with you, it I've got a kind of a lawyer. I used to be a lawyer. I've got a lawyer skepticism about <laughs> things. It's just bred in. I can't get rid of it. I've tried. Sure. And, and I, I, I take a angel seriously in that I know they exist and I know they 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 work in our lives and they they have a role to play in the kingdom. But the stories of angelic visitations, because they can't really be proven, they're subjective. I end up thinking, well, you know, I don't know about that. But when you told your stories of experiences with angels, I sensed a, a completely different credibility, mm. and I since we started this podcast, I thought I want to get Marty on here sometime to talk about her, her experience with angels. So that's, we're going to grill you and, and uh, I'm going to put a lie detector on you. And if you even make one little mistake, we're going to excommunicate you, you know, that kind of thing. It, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but here, before we go there, before we go there, we'd love to hear um, more of your story. How did you come into the things of the spirit? Mm -hmm. How did you begin to move in the supernatural dimension of our faith? And a little bit more about you as a person, and then we'll go into some of these, these experiences that you've had. So tell us about, about your walk. Yes. Yeah, so I, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on your podcast, Bob and Mark. Appreciate you both. And so honored to be here to share the story, my journey, uh, what the Lord has done in my life and as he continues to grow uh, more and more into what he has been already sowing into my life. So how, you know, I prayed about this and how I would share a little bit about how I came in even to the spiritual realm and the supernatural. It's been a journey. It's not been an overnight thing. It's been something that started very young. I mean, I won't tell you how old I am, but but I'll tell you, it started about my 20s. Um, that one thing that I used to be um, kind of grew up very Catholic. I grew up with a mother that was very um, in tune with dreams and visions. So very dreams and visions were her language at home, even as a Catholic mom. So the supernatural was very spoken at home without the language that we can have and grow with the Lord. And so she didn't have a lot of language to it, but she would communicate a lot. And then we had, as children, we had, I think, uh, for me, I had a lot of encounters um, as a child that were with the Lord. And so those were opportunities and encounters that God sowed into my life with when I was young. Then growing Catholic into later in my life, I got saved at the age of 21. Can I just stop you for a second? I got a question. Sure. These, these encounters with the Lord as a child are very important. Can you yeah. describe kind of the nature of, of what you experienced and how it affected you? Yeah. Uh, so I would have two, I have two types of encounters that would create, one would create faith and one would create fear. So the demonic forces would try to, come and also whenever there's a you know you're a child 
how they would try to harass this area. And so I would see that and I would ask God, I would pray, like, take this away. I don't want to see this realm. I, I didn't know how to just, Lord, take this away. God, take this away. Um, then I would have these encounters. Um, the first encounter was I was, um, I lived in another country. I was born in Nicaragua, um, Central America. And um, we experienced an earthquake back in 1979. I, was I remember that. Yeah, I was four years old and three years old, three, four years old. And what happened is that was the first encounter I had with the Lord. So I was buried under rubble for about a day. They couldn't find no. me. Yeah. Seriously. So, seriously. How old were you? I was like three and a half because I was, it was, I had just turned, yeah, three in November. So, so I was really young and I, re I don't remember, but I do remember the encounter being pulled out out of the rubble by the Lord and having different uh, experiences that, that the Lord was going to take me out of the rubble. And they found me a day later and I was kind of blinded for three days with just dirt in my eyes. So that was the first encounter. I just felt the Lord was bringing me out of the, out of this place. I would try to tell my mom, I said, I saw this. And, and she says, well, maybe you're seeing things. Maybe you had trauma from the earthquake. And, but I remember having this encounter and then many, several encounters, even like having communion as a kid, my first communion as a Catholic girl, uh, the Lord came to me and uh, showed me vision. So I would see visions first. So this is how it kind of started for me as a child and in the supernatural, but not having any language to it. Um, and I would share with my parents and they would say, just don't tell the nuns, please don't tell the priests. They, they would, they will not receive us. They, they'll probably <laughs> tell you from that school. So, um, so my parents would tell me, don't share this because this is too, too out there. And so I just would keep it to myself. And then for a while kind of went silent in these visions or dreams or encounters until I got saved. And so that was the age of 21. And one of the things that as after I got saved, and I've always kind of had this heart of hospitality. So when I got saved, uh, immediately this hospitality gift came upon me, like just really bloomed. And I love to host people. I love to stop for the one and on the road, the Samaritan on the road, right? Kind of thing. And, and so I would just stop for people and I, I remember reading a scripture in Hebrews 13 that talks about how um, I believe 13 to hospitality, you know, you're, you, you, sometimes we, when we host people, right. We are entertaining angels at times, right. By doing so we entertain angels. And so I felt that there was a connection with hospitality and the angelic at a very young age. And I didn't understand it until I would have hospitality moments with people Let's say I would, um, in 1995, I remember just getting filled with, with the Holy Spirit. I was 25 years old. And I remember stopping for this homeless man and not understand. Uh, I would see people go by this guy and he was actually stealing the money from the fountain that people were throwing their wishes in. <laughs> and, I, and I'm with my young son at the time. I, I was pushing a stroller and I looked at him and I said, what's this guy doing? stealing the money from the people that are just throwing money into the fountain. And I went up to him and I said, Hey, uh, sir, what are you, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm just taking, I need to eat. And I said, well, okay, let's leave the money there. I said, I can get you some food and let's, let's talk. So I just stopped and I, there was a little shop of deli and I just got some sandwiches and I just said, here, take this. And, and, then I said, you know, um, are you usually here? And he said, yes. And he said, okay. I said, I'll be right back. I live like five minutes away from this mall. It's like an outdoor mall. And so I came back with some clothes, blankets, and I knew he was homeless. Um, I ministered to him. I just got baptized. I'm like, I'm on fire right now. I felt <laughs> this fire come upon me when I was, so I just said, you know, and then he told me he was away from, I said, do you know the Lord? And he said, no, I, well, he said, I, I do, but I walked away from him and I said, okay. He said, I carry a little Bible with me. And I said, that's awesome. Um, so I, I just loved on him. I listened to him. 
And then he, I said, well, can I just say a little prayer over you? And he said, yeah. So I prayed for him. And he, he said to me, uh, I want to pray over you now. And I said, okay. Uh, and all of a sudden I just got this, how do I say this feeling in my spirit? I, I, I just felt like this is not normal. This guy just told me he was away from the Lord. So he says, I want to pray for you. And I said, okay. And he has me in the middle of this plaza, you know, he says, why don't you kneel down? And I said, excuse me. And he says, kneel down. And so he begins to prophesy over my life, what I would be doing in the future. And then he gives me that word, you know, what you've done unto me, you know, what you have to done. To the least of these. The least of these, right? That you have blessed me. And so I said, and I knew that I was standing in front of somebody that it wasn't normal. Um, And I just began to ask the Lord, what was this? And so he walked away and I think I was in, in, in just in awe of the presence I was in. This was my first prophetic word. It was not even in a church. God begins to prophesy over my life through this man Those words have come to pass. He prophesied I would be someone in the church. God was going to use my voice, that I was called to be a prophetic voice to to the uh, churches, to people, that I was going to set people free, bring deliverance. I mean, I still can remember the word so clearly. I didn't need to write it, record it. It was something so grafted in my heart. And so I, I began to say, okay, so I got his name. I said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Max. Um, now speed up a couple years after I went through a very tragic, um, situation in my life where I was devastated through this tragic, um, divorce that I was walking through and very felt like Hagar sort of say, let's, let's put it the, the feeling of Hagar. I was feeling like I was in the desert and, you know, angels always tend to minister to people, you know, when they come to comfort people for, from the Lord, they come to minister to people. And so I was really blessed by um, this guy just shows up out of, out of nowhere. This is now speeding up a couple years later. I was crying to work and I pull up in my parking lot at my job. This guy shows up and 7 a.m. where it's still kind of dark in a winter day. And I, I didn't want to open the door and he knocks and he says, you're Marty. And I said, Who's, you know, I said, oh God, who's, who is this person following me? And so he says, I'm Max. <laughs> and I went, how, how, yeah, I was like, Max, I, yes, I remember you. And he still looked very homeless. He still had, a, he had his hood up. I think that's what scared me at the moment. And, and he goes, remember me, I'm Max, the one you helped a couple years ago. And I said, yeah, I remember you. And he said, I go, what are you doing? He said, I have a message for you. Uh, And so I thought, well, and he gave me this scroll and it was rolled up. And he's and he said, "Okay." And I said, hold up. I have to go in. I have to log into my computer, let them know I'm on time. So I said, could you stay outside? Don't don't leave. Don't leave. So I I went in. I should have never left to this day. I said I should have never went in. Could have been late to work, but. You know, sometimes we don't know we're entertaining angels. And so uh, I went in, I opened the scroll inside, and it was this beautiful, angelic painting. And it, like, the, basically, it was a picture. It was a painting of an angel. Of an angel. And it on a sash, it had a sash, Psalm 91, across it. And, you know, the scripture, Psalm 91, for he commands his angels to guard over you. And I was like, wow. Wow. And so I went outside. He was gone. Of course. <laughs> of course. Right. I, he's gone. And so I said, I feel like I just entertained this angel, but it, the connection didn't happen until then. We're talking years. This is the same guy I ministered and prophesied in a plaza over me. A couple years later, he shows up again in this, this time, and period of my life to comfort me. And I, I, I knew there was some, something that was happening that was different. And I felt the connection to the angelic. 
how strong it was. So that was the beginning of that. Um, the same angel comes into play years later. And this is where I shared with Mark with you in 2018. I'm sorry, yeah, 2018. Um, I'm going through a very difficult time through health. I was going through a health issue that was very difficult. I didn't know what was going to happen in my future with the church, with everything. And I had been crying out to the Lord. And normally we all have what I call worship rooms in, in our homes. You know, like I have my, I'm in my prayer room right now. So this is where I meet people. This is where I talk to people. This is where I worship all day long. Um, our bedrooms, my bedrooms uh, is where I talk to the Lord, but it's, it's more where the, the weakness, the crying, the weeping and anything that happens is usually in my bedroom. The worship room is it's the worship area. So um, the Lord visits me in 2018 on a specific night that I was in excruciating pain. And I was crying out to him. I said, please show up. I don't know what to do anymore. And so he sent the angelic first. And it was the angel in the same portrait that was given to me in 1995. And By Max. Max. And so, well, it, it was, I didn't know if Max is the same angelic on the portrait, but all I right. knew... Yeah. All I knew is that the same angel that was in the picture was in front of me. What so, did he look like? How, you know, let's let's go into this this yeah. appearance a little more. Yeah. You're saying now I'm I'm not being skeptical. No, I'm just I being I'm just being precise. Yes. So you're in your room, you're pouring your heart out in a real sense of desperation. And you 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 see something. Did you see it with your eyes, or did you merely spiritually sense it? No, I actually seen it with my eyes. Well, Bob, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> great. I feel like I'm watching some kind of Hollywood movie, and I and it just stopped. And episode two is coming up, and I I can't wait to get to episode two. It's amazing. Um, there's a couple of observations I had that I think are interesting, teachable moment out of what Marty said several times in discussing her early childhood experiences with the supernatural. She said, but I didn't have the language for it. Then another mm -hmm. time she talked about an experience that I, I didn't have the language for it. And I think this is a really, really important truth. Until we have the language with which to understand a spiritual experience, the spiritual experience doesn't have much power in our life because we don't know where to put it. We don't know how to understand it. When she got filled with the Holy Spirit and more of these things began to happen, she had a context in which to put these experiences so they would really be valuable in her life. And I'm going to take a, a moment to uh, advertise our book. I think that when we have good understanding of the supernatural and the language of the supernatural, we can enter into it far more deeply and with much, much greater effect. So instead of having a couple of interesting memories, we have something that actually functions in an ongoing way in our lives. So I find her story fantastic and uh, fantastic, not fantasy, but fantastic. And I can't wait to hear the next one and learn all we can learn about uh, cooperating with the angelic. You know, uh, the fact that you mentioned you were skeptical, being a lawyer, being an attorney, you come from that kind of back background. And I think one of the proofs to me is the fruit in a person's life. If they have an encounter like this and they draw closer to God, they live a more godly life, they are more spiritually, I mean, excuse me, they're more scripturally sound then that tells you that the fruit of this encounter is uh, good. And uh, you can, we can trust or we can be confident that it's falling into that category of what could, can, we would consider a genuine godly uh, encounter with the supernatural. So I look yeah. forward to part two. And if you've been listening to this, uh, we'll have it out there soon. And you can hear that. We've got uh, some other things we're going to hear from her too. So, 
please come back and join us. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that. That way you can get updates when we issue our next podcast. And uh, like Mark said, check out our book. You'll see in the little blurb here at the end where you can get that. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time. Next time. You've been listening to the Reluctantly Supernatural podcast with your hosts, Mark Cowpersmith and Bob Maddox. Be sure to check out our website at www.reluctantlysupernatural.com or visit our YouTube channel, Reluctantly Supernatural, for more videos and podcasts. To get a copy of our book, Reluctantly Supernatural in an Age of Reason, you can purchase it at Amazon.com or order it directly from us at our website, www.reluctantlysupernatural.com.